Good evening and welcome to the final installment of Saugus for the 2019-2020 school year. My name is Aaron McGill, your host. We have a very special show in, for, in store for you tonight. The theme for tonight's show is all about COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. This virus has affected Seaman High School and the Seaman community. In tonight's show, we'll cover how Seaman High School is planning for the future events, how businesses have been able to stay open and help the community, and student-athletes speak up on their Miss 2020 season. For our first story, while school remains closed, some big events have been delayed until the end of the summer. Here's a detailed look at the current plans for prom, graduation, and more. Seaman High School has been empty for nearly two months. Precautions to slow the spread of COVID-19 have caused schools to close through May. However, as the reopening process begins, some activities are being rescheduled for the end of the summer. I talked to a member of our staff and administration to learn more. We knew that we didn't want to just say, well, that's too bad. Uh, we missed our opportunity, you know, and we're done. We thought, no, we need to do some planning and we wanted to be sure to give every opportunity for our students to um, experience, you know, graduation and, and prom, if at all possible. And so by delaying the dates like we have done, it, it maximizes the opportunity for us to hold those events. Prom has been rescheduled for July 30th. Mrs. Riley, who leads the planning committee, explains how COVID-19 has affected their process. It's obviously impacted it in a major way. Generally, we take the junior student council reps out to Kansas Rentals. We make a field trip during seminar, or I guess this year it would have been during CLP. And they would get to choose all of the decorations that we're using from Kansas Rentals. And we would have been able to have more meetings. We would have been able to pass out the invitations when we got back from spring break. And so... Now we are kind of in the same waiting game that we are with everything. And I guess that's the biggest major impact is we're just in our waiting game. I asked Mr. Monahan about any potential social distancing guidelines planned for prom. And he said that they would turn to local health officials for advice. And we'll follow the guidance of, of those that know more about those things than we do. And so I would Im imagine that our local officials would say something like, okay, we're going to allow large gatherings. Uh, we think that it would be wise if you did temperature checks and everybody uh, would wear a mask and also practice social distancing as much as possible. I would look for them to give us some guidance and naturally we would follow that. I think we're kind of in this weird holding pattern because we want to be able to make the plans, but of course we also are being tentative or cautious because obviously we can't know for sure what is going to happen in the next few months. And when I have been speaking with administration, there is always the possibility that we would have to push this off even longer. And if that was the case, um, one thing that administration has told me is they've essentially said they've got um, backup plans for graduation but we'll reach a point where there aren't backup plans for prom because if we get into the next school year, we can't really have a prom when school has started. So because of that, we're in this kind of holding pattern where we're making our plans. Um, we are choosing everything that we need to have, but I haven't purchased it to be sent to the school or our house yet, just in case, because we don't want to have to send things back. We have our DJ on retainer. We have a photographer on retainer. We have the location on retainer. So all of those things are squared away. It's the small details that we haven't fully moved on yet because, you know, we don't want to order all of this preemptively only to find out that we aren't going to be able to use it. The day after prom will be graduation practice. This is when students will be able to pick up their cap and gown. But what is Jostens doing about announcements? They're going to mail those to students, and also they're going to have the upgraded announcement date on there. So um, students can go ahead and send those out. Immediately following graduation practice will be a cookout. We're really looking forward uh, to that for a couple of reasons. One, we want to be able to see everyone and 
allow students to pick up their CUM folder that has all their school records from the time that they were in grade school. It's kind of fun seeing some of those pictures. And so they'll pick up those folders and then we'll have, uh, you know, some hamburgers and hot dogs and things and just have a chance to visit. Then on August 2nd, the class of 2020 will finally graduate. But what if gatherings are limited to a thousand people? Could graduation possibly be held without an audience? Mr. Monahan considers this possibility. And if that were the case, um, I would like to hear from students and families, but my belief is students would say, let's do it and then let's live stream it and we'll make the most of it because at least we could have what is uh, normal in the experience for them, but just without the audience, except knowing that they're viewing uh, with a live stream or recording. And so that's probably what that would look like. We've had great success with the live streaming efforts over the years, and we'll keep that along with the, you know, the seniors uh, and their thank yous. I'm Aaron McGill, and I plan on going to Kansas State University to study mass communications. And I would just like to thank my parents and my sister and just my friends and my teachers for getting me through these past four years. And we'll have some things, maybe even more things this year that are recorded than before, but um, we'll provide just the maximum amount of um, recordings that we can to preserve the history. You know, this is our 100th graduating class. It's a pretty special group. A 100-year celebration was originally scheduled to take place on June 6th, but that too has been put on hold. The Alumni Association was just in contact with me, and I shared with them a couple of thoughts. You know, one that they had was maybe, could we do it sometime in the fall? And so that's one that they may be looking at. Um, and then the other option that I just mentioned, and, you know, think all things are up for consideration, is maybe they would consider, you know, next June and have 101, you know, celebration. That way nobody's too stressed out because, you know, there's a lot of planning that goes into that and we want to be able to maximize the opportunity for everyone. So that it, we'll wait and see what they decide, but um, either one of those I think are doable. So after seniors finally graduate, how will they get their diplomas? Traditionally, you know, the week after graduation, we make opportunities for students to come in and pick those up because we've only allowed for one copy ever, and it's that one that you sign out for, your parents sign off for you when they pick it up, but unlimited transcripts. This year, though, looks different, so uh, I could envision possibly mailing them just as a convenience, um, but maybe we allow kids, if they're allowed to, to come in and pick them up because we always like to say hello and, you know, visit with them a little bit in that process, and if they can't pick them up, maybe we would mail them under the circumstances, but probably look a little bit like that. Students have already been able to request essential items from the school, but Mr. Monahan expects everything to be available for pickup soon. Our hope is that in June we'll be allowed to do that and we'll send out an announcement to everybody when to come. We might just pick by last names, A through D can come at 8 o'clock or whatever and come pick their things up. What we found in the lockers was about 10% of our upperclassmen had items in their lockers that we've bagged and tagged and about 20% of our freshmen did. Um, there aren't quite a few items yet from the PE locker rooms, but those are well organized and would be easy to hand out. And there may be some things from other classes that students would like to pick up as well. Another thing students usually pick up over the summer? Yearbooks. Advisor Mrs. Riley tells us how her staff is adapting to the situation. I would say that it's impacted the yearbook in kind of three major ways. Um, the first is obviously spring sports. The majority of the yearbook we can do with the pictures that we have from now until third quarter. But spring sports had just had, what, their first week of practice when we finished, or they had just picked their rosters but hadn't fully gotten into their season yet. So as far as spring sports go, um, I have spoken with the editorial team of the yearbook multiple times, and we have a plan in place. The idea is to take what the page would have been and kind of make it a senior tribute page. And so asking the coaches who are the seniors on your team and um, talking to them. And so having a tribute for them since they didn't get to have their final season. And then any of the pages that would have been double pages will probably only be one double page spread instead of two now, just because we will not have 
the pictures, we won't have the scoreboards, we won't have the things that we would normally have. Um, so each spring sport will get one double page spread. It will probably focus majority on the seniors and the loss of their final season, but they'll still be there. Um, so that's the first way it was affected. The second way that it's been affected is some of the pages that we would typically have, we're not sure that we are going to be able to have in the yearbook proper. We think we might have to go to an outside printer and print them separately and have them be inserts for the book. So, for example, prom, afterglow, graduation, those are all things that are happening so late in the year that there's not really a way for us to put it in the book itself and still get the books in a reasonable amount of time. But we want to have those pages, obviously. We want to honor those things. And so the idea is to create them in InDesign, print them on good quality paper in color so that they can be put into the senior book so you still have the pages. Um, so that's the second way that the yearbook has been impacted. The third way it's been impacted is we're going to have a section for COVID-19. And so we're going to have a section on how this has affected all of us in the variety of different ways that it has. And I don't want to get too far into that because my editorial staff and my staff in general had some really great ideas for what could go on those pages. So I kind of want that to be a surprise because they're working hard on those. But we'll have a whole section devoted to how this has you know, changed the lives of our students and our teachers and our community. We're not going to end up making the exact book we thought we would make but we're gonna make a great book anyways. So even though it won't look exactly the way we wanted it to look, we're gonna make it look amazing anyways. Mrs. Riley's goal is to have the yearbooks available around the same time as usual, possibly at another back to school bash. She leaves us with advice for departing seniors. The biggest message I can give the high school seniors is that we are all thinking of you guys and we understand the things that you have been required to give up and we wish that we could give those things back to you and we're working to give you what we can um that we think that you are incredibly resilient and we are super impressed and proud of the things that you guys have been doing in the face of this adversity um just a couple of things off the top of my head. The fact that SVTV is still going. The fact that we have students who are doing um, art projects and journaling projects. The fact that we have um, students who are still working so hard to have as much of their senior year as they can. And um, I think that we can see that in the fact that the district is doing the lights on for seniors event where they're turning on the stadium lights and asking the community to turn their lights on for the seniors. And I guess I would say, hang in there. And I know it might not feel like it right now, but you are gonna have one heck of a story to tell to your kids and your grandkids. And just hang in there and we're thinking about you guys. You are awesome. Seniors took their final walk through the halls of Seaman High School before spring break, and they didn't even know it. But the district is working hard to provide a few more memories before moving on with the rest of their lives. Stay tuned for updates as time goes on, but for now, stay safe, Vikes. Hopefully, activities can return to normal by the end of the summer, so seniors can finish their high school career on a high note. For our next story, all businesses except essential ones were closed during the pandemic. Love's Truck Stop stayed open to help support truckers transporting some much needed supplies. A new Love's Truck Stop opened up recently on February 6th. And as the coronavirus has still kept people away from the public, the Tr Love's Truck Stop has managed to stay open with plenty of business. Check out what precautions were made to prevent the virus at this truck stop. We are a truck and travel stop. Our uh, main focus is taking care of truck drivers. Um, we have showers available for them to uh, bathe and clean themselves while they're on the road, as well as we have restaurants for them to eat at and other healthy options for them to eat in the store. We cut fruit in the store for them to eat and we roll tacos in the store for them to eat. Truck drivers are essential. They're the only thing keeping this nation going right now. They're delivering their products to the stores. They're delivering the food to the shelves. And we here at Loves, uh, we are keeping them moving by providing them with diesel gas to keep moving and uh, food and showers to also keep moving. 
Well, to stop the spread of the virus, we are constantly sanitizing. Um, we have separated the restaurant and the store side to be two separate entities so we're not cross-contaminating. We uh, also have separated our shifts. So at shift change, we completely move out the first shift employees and the second shift employees take place. So that way there's no interaction. We are enforcing social distancing, um, not only with customers, but uh, with our employees. I mean, we took a, pre a preemptive approach to it. We took a very early approach to it um, before the CDC released any kind of regulations. We, we stopped letting people bring refills in. We put signs up for that. Um, and then from there, we took our deli to full service. We have signs for that, um, as well as we have social distancing signs on the floor to keep people separated. We have also shut down Chester's completely, and the other two restaurants that were 24 hours a day are now closing at 10 so we can sanitize. So Chester's concept is we cook the chicken, we put it in a hot case, and you guys choose what you want. Um, Chester's corporate felt that it was a danger to be handling the chicken while possible, um, possibly sick employees would be handling the chicken. So they just decided it was smarter for them to shut down completely. Um, so our spit guards are really just um, not only for protection for our own employees, but for the, uh, the customers as well. Um, it's stopping that bacteria from coming out of your mouth uh, and from your breath, uh, from hitting the customer or, or vice versa. Um, masks, it's, it's a clear, easy um, solution to the problem. I mean, it's stopping you from breathing in any kind of uh, infectious materials or anything like that. It may not have an immediate effect on you, but there are people with serious health concerns that uh, this virus does affect and, and will have a major health effect on them. So I think we do, yes, need to take this very seriously. What we tell our employees is we enforce proper hand washing procedures, which is adequate time, adequate uh, materials, and then as well as hand washing, we do hand sanitizing. We have hand sanitizer stations all over the store, not only for our customers, but employees. Um, and we also are sanitizing regularly. Um, on top of that, our courtesy checks, which are our bathroom cleaning checks, went from every hour to every half hour just to stay sanitized. The biggest effect it had on the store is really just change in procedures as well as um, a drop in sales and activity. I mean, we were, we were doing incredible sales when we opened and then this hit and it just died off. Um, and then the procedures like uh, that I just explained have just changed everybody's job dramatically. I mean, it's completely changed how we, how we operate Loves and how we, uh, we get tasks done at Loves. Overall advice is uh, proper hand washing, social distancing. Um, at times it could seem a little bit ridiculous or redundant, but it, it is important and it is saving lives. So hand washing, social distancing, uh, and if you're not, if you don't need to go out, just stay home. I mean, it, uh, it's, we only kept essential businesses open for a reason. So um, you just need to follow the CDC's uh, guidelines they set up. Thank you to all the truckers who keep our country running. These are unprecedented times that we're currently living in. We all can agree that it is the government's responsibility to keep the public informed and protected. But how far can that government go in the name of protection before it infringes on personal freedoms? Here's Chase to express his opinion. Hello ladies and gents, my name is Chase Johnson and this is my dehydration station. Today we are going to be talking about some boring politics stuff, so, you know, if you want to just skip over this entire segment, I really don't care because, quite frankly, it bores me as well. We are going to be talking about the coronavirus, and which I'm sure you've already heard a lot about, I'm kind of sick of hearing about it, and we're going to be talking about whether or not the government should have issued stay-at-home orders and closed businesses and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Also, is it the government's right, or not the government's right, but does the government have the right to close businesses and keep people at home? So let's start with answering that one. And uh, the answer is yes and definitely. The government has been given this in certain laws. I can't remember the laws, and I'm not going to look them up because I'm too lazy. You know, it's like uh, something like pandemic law or something like that. 
where saying that basically they can do everything they can to try to limit the spread of the virus, which, you know, that's what they're doing with the state home orders, trying to enforce people to uh, practice social distancing and keeping businesses closed, which uh, non-essential businesses closed, which also goes into that. And so let's get on straight on to the second topic and whether or not it, they should have done that. Uh, personally, I understand why they did it, to try to limit the number of people infected and the number of people that die from the coronavirus or COVID-19. But I still don't think that they should have closed businesses and restricted movement because I think that in the United States, freedom of movement is one of the freedoms given to you as a citizen of the United States. And I, think, I don't think this was always something that was thought to be a freedom, but I think it really started to emerge in the 1950s with the growing popularity of automobiles in the United States, where it was thought that cars was an extension of your freedom. They allowed you to go where you want, when you want, uh, fairly easily. And I think that still holds true in the United States, that one of its values is you can go where you want and do what you want, and the government can't really stop you. But of course, like any other freedom, there is limitations, like you can't just go onto someone's property and not expect to uh, you know, commit a crime of trespassing, and you can't just break into a military base because you, uh, you know, you want, you want it for the, uh, for the laws, as the kids say. But now that I've said what I think should have happened, I'm going to ex explain how I think, how, how it could have been done to go along with, you know, what I think. So, when this, I think what should have happened is the CDC issues their guidelines on what they think people should do to try to limit the spread, which is exactly what they did. They talked about social distancing, don't get in groups of 10, stuff like, stuff like that. Wash your hands, cough in your elbow, wear a mask if you go outside, stuff like that. So I think they should have done exactly what they did. Now, I think the government shouldn't have created any rules to try to enforce people to do that, and, I th and it should have just been sort of like a, a guideline. You're supposed to follow it, and, you know, if you're smart, you should follow it, but it's not necessary. You don't necessarily have to do it. So this could have kept, this could have kept businesses open, and people could have gone out, and they could have you know, listen to the CDC and try to limit how much they move, or they could, you know, just continue life as normal, go where they want and do what they want and risk infecting themselves and others. Now, you know, I understand that if you do something like that, it means more people are going to get infected and therefore more people are going to die, which isn't necessarily pleasant to think about. But I also think that doing something like that would kind of show that the freedom of the individual in the United States is greater than the freedom of the whole, which I think is another thing that the United States is all about. It's all about the individual and the individual's rights over the, the, you know, the whole. Now, you know, I kind of lost my train of thought, honestly. Uh, you know, it's most likely because there's this very, very loud dehumidifier right next to me. And it's kind of creating a, a white noise and making me, my mind slowly melt. But uh, I think that's all I have to say for right now. So, uh, you know, see you next year or not, maybe. I don't know. Bye.
No matter what you believe, it is still important that we continue to practice social distancing to keep not only ourselves, but others safe as well. For our last story, the idea of no spring sports due to the closure of school is very heartbreaking, from state basketball being cut short to those who have lost their senior season. I caught up with four seniors to talk about what they missed in their 2020 season. The first student I spoke with was senior swimmer Molly Biggs. I was really disappointed at first um, just because I'd spent a lot of money and a lot of time conditioning and preparing for the season and we had really good team leadership this season with um, five really strong seniors and we were hoping to um, win City this year and we had um, high goals, high expectations set and then obviously all of the equipment and uh, money we'd put into team suits and um, other like professional gear that we bought, like fins, paddles, um, tech suits, all that kind of stuff. It kind of felt almost like um, we wasted money on all of that stuff since we don't get to swim this season. Molly has participated in the SHS girls swim team all four years of her high school career. She was looking forward to being a leader and a team role model this year. It's disappointing, especially as a senior, because it's like we've watched all of the seniors before us get to be in these leadership positions and get to organize all of the um, team activities. And we'd plan like a team sleepover. We were like super excited for this season. And um, it was disappointing more in the sense that we don't get to finish on that aspect of a team, um, like team bonding almost. So like we we can swim on a competitive team again. It's just, we don't get to do the team dinners. We don't get to do the um, secret sister gift exchange. We don't get to have our team sleep over. It was just like the team aspect of being at practice with those girls every day that um, really made like me. I know some of my fellow seniors like really sad that we just don't get to have those experiences with each other. Um, and it, we'd had some like other, other years. It just felt like, we were looking forward to this one so much that we kind of forgot to appreciate what we have had. To Molly, the swim team was more of a team experience than an individual experience. It was more the, the team aspect of we don't get to be with our friends, we don't get to swim alongside each other anymore. With no 2020 season this year, Molly looks forward to this summer. I don't plan on swimming in college, but this summer, the Topeka North Rays um, is like a competitive swim camp, and I know we were trying to get a lot of the um, high school girls who were going to be on the team this year to join the team so that we could have like one last chance to have our, like, our team, we could swim together, because that's one thing that, especially the five of us seniors that have done it for all four years together, like that's one thing we all really united on. We were all really friends because of swim. And so it's like when we got to our season, like it was it was time for us to shine, time for us to be able to just like experience that with one another. Um, and now we're trying to just transfer that to the next team. It's a way for us to still be able to say that like we have a competitive team to be a part of. Like we don't have to go out on the note of, oh, we finished without the team aspect. We we're done before we swam our last competition before we knew we were going to. It's like we at least get one more chance to say goodbye to the sport that we love instead of just like going out on the sour note. Molly has one final message to all underclassmen. I know it's super disappointing, especially to all the underclassmen who seem like they're like, well, the seniors are getting all of this recognition because it was their last year, but they're all missing a sports season too. Um, yeah, it, it really stinks for everybody, except um, we just have to keep keep our heads about us and know that it will get better and everything's going to just go up from here. So stay inside. Our next senior is tennis team captain Kate Anderson. Probably getting to know everybody because, I mean, everybody on the tennis team is actually pretty cool. And if you're – if you, you know everybody on the tennis team, it's a pretty – tight-knit community there's not a whole lot of us but we all play together and then he uh the way our coach would do it is he wouldn't just split us up the whole time we'd always do stuff together so varsity does know who jv is and jv knows who varsity is and everybody just became good friends and we had group chats fun conversations during warm-ups we'd always mess around 
stuff like that. You know, if you don't have relationships when you're in tennis, then it's not going to work out like your doubles partner. If you're playing doubles, you have to have a good relationship with them or else you're going to suck. Kate has played on Seaman High School's boys tennis team all four years of his high school career. He explains what he'll miss the most. Definitely the meets. I mean, they were just a lot of fun, especially if we did really good. And like last year, we had Pietro. And so we'd always be sitting on the sidelines when he'd be doing real good. Or me and Blake, we'd be playing a game and just all the whole team would be sitting on the sides rooting for us. So I'm definitely going to miss that. Cade had his goals set high for the 2020 season. I was trying to make it back to state, and I at least wanted to get to the – well, how tennis works is there's a second day, which is top 12. If you make it to top 12, then you go for medals. So I was hoping to make it to that because I was one off last year. Cade was upset about not being able to play for his senior season, but now he is focusing on the future. I, I'm lucky that I get to go to college to play tennis, but everybody else they don't get to. But I wanted to play high school tennis because high school tennis is fun. I'm, I'm, I have a lot more fun in high school because in college I'm probably going to get whipped. So I was, yeah, I was pretty upset and I was just kind of, you know, in denial. In the fall, Cade will be attending Bethel University to major in marketing and media on a tennis scholarship. He has a message to others about playing tennis. Yeah, you should definitely try out for tennis or do a sport with some friends. Get your buddies out there. It's a lot of fun. You, know, you won't regret it because you're going to miss it after high school, especially if you get your senior year cut off like I did, but whatever, it's fine. The third senior is soccer player Ashley Sadler. Getting to play on our nice new turf field with our new head coach, Mallory Diedrich, and I was also, of course, looking forward to having senior night and all the fun senior stuff in sports. Ashley has played girls soccer at Salmon High School all four years. The team had goals set high for this upcoming season. The ultimate goal was for us to go to state. That is what we kept saying, that everything we were doing was to get us to state. Um, but also the seniors were really just trying to make the team like a real team because in the past, like, girls soccer hasn't – it's kind of been, like, a polarized and, like, there's certain cliques and stuff. So this year we were really trying to just be really inclusive of everyone. And I think we were doing a pretty good job because we were including everyone. And Mallory helped a lot with it because during practice, like – JV players or practice with varsity players. Ashley will look forward to the 2020 seasons, especially with a new head coach, Mallory Diedrich. It was going to be awesome. Uh, Mallory is the best. Um, with conditioning and practice at the beginning, like, she created a positive and like enjoyable atmosphere for the team. And then we also had another new assistant coach. Her name is Jenna Cunningham. Uh, she's loads of fun too. Uh, everybody loved her. Everybody got along super great with them. So I think had we had this season, it probably would have been my best season during my time at Seaman High School with soccer. With the missed opportunities of what was the 2020 season, Ashley keeps her head up for future opportunities. My response is probably a little bit less than others. I didn't cry at first. I did later. But when I first heard, I just said, okay. I was like, I can't do anything about it, um, and I'm actually playing in college next year, so I was like, I wanted to play my last season in high school, but it's not my last season ever, and for other seniors, it was their last season ever, so I just had to realize, like, I don't have it as bad as others do, mm -hmm. so I just kind of learned to accept it and just focus on college soccer for now. Ashley planned on attending Allen Community College in the fall to major in elementary education, on a soccer scholarship. The final senior is track star Kara Dister. This year, I was planning on doing the mile. I've been doing the mile all four years. And I was actually going to try doing the 800 because since I was only in one event last year, which was the mile, I thought I could try something new. Kara is an SHS senior that has ran track all four years of high school. She has set herself high goals for the 2020 season. And I was really trying to break 6.59 on my mile time. Now, I know that's not that fast, but I have been working super hard during win the winter conditioning and summer conditioning to finally meet my goals. And my whole team is trying to make state also, but since that was canceled... 
Kara first heard about the 2020 season cancellation in a less than ideal way. So I first heard about track being canceled in our cross-country group chat, which I have with Coach Braiding and all the other XC girls that were planning on doing track. And his text was so, so sad. He was so disappointed that the season was canceled, and he was really looking forward to spending some time with the girls and to push us to do our best. And I felt really bad. And he sent us all text messages saying how much he wished he had this last season with the seniors. And he was thankful that he had us for the other three years. Kara had thanks to prove to herself, her coaches, and her peers in the upcoming track season. Now, she'll never get those opportunities. Well, I was really looking forward to this season of track because this was my very last chance to prove to my friends and coaches that, that I could do this. I could break my mile time. I could just I just wanted to give it 110% this season because this would be the last chance I would get to be part of a track team. So I wanted to give it everything that I had and having that opportunity taken away from me really really hit me hard. It kind of gave me kind of gave me a reality check and it just made me realize that I don't have any more chances. I'm really thankful for all the moments I had with my team in the past. At least I had three other years. Kara ran track for the last time without even knowing it. Sadly, I will not be running track or cross country in college since I will be going to K-State, but I will be participating in the K-State marching band and that is a lot of physical exertion and I'm very glad that I have four years of cardio under my belt because they say you, you have to use your thighs a lot, and I'm glad I'm already decently in shape so I won't die the first week of band camp. Kara has one final message for all of the class of 2020. Class of 2020, you're amazing. You have such determination and courage, and thank you all for just being yourselves, and we're going to get through this together. We're going to get through this tough time and overcome everything. For all the students that missed out on their 2020 seasons, our heart goes out to you. That is all for tonight for our fifth and final episode of Sagas for the 2019 to 2020 school year. From all of us at Sagas, we'd like to thank you for watching this very special episode. We would also like to thank the Seaman High School Administration and teachers for allowing SVTV and Sagas to continue during these uncertain times. Tune in next school year for new stories and new themes. Thank you for watching.